budget microphones are a confusing concept because you have microphones that are $20 and you have microphones that are $500 and they're still considered budget. I think this is because budget has a different meaning if you're a professional versus somebody who's using it as a consumer. All right. Wow. This is really good. This is like, oh, I might like this better than my, ooh, than my own mic. Oh no. So this is kind of an example of that. The Rode NT1 is like $270. The AT2035 is like $150. And that's not nearly as drastic of a difference, but there's still a difference there. And it can be even more confusing because the AT2035 technically has more features. It has a negative 10 dB pad on it, and it also has a low cut. But as we know, microphones are not just a list of features. If that were the case, we would all buy a blue Yeti and we would call it a day. That is not right. That's not how we do things here. Would everyone just shut up? Oh God, man, hell. So if the road doesn't have a low cut like the AT2035 has, and the road doesn't have a pad like the 2035 has, what makes the road NT1 worth the price jump? Well, the actual hardware quality in the road NT1 is a little bit better. It has a one inch gold plated capsule to pick up sound and the AT2035 has a 0.8 inch capsule. And if we do want to actually talk about features, the road NT1 has a built in internal shock mount to help with self noise. And it also has a Rycote external shock mount, which is extremely high quality for this price range. Because of the larger capsule size, the Rode NT1 actually has a more sensitive audio image, at least in theory. And the Rode NT1 is noted for its extremely low self noise. It has a self noise level of four and a half decibels and the AT2035 has a self noise level of 12 decibels. One thing that the Rode NT1 is also known for is having an extremely flat EQ curve. Basically the Rode NT1 has very little boosted frequencies, which is great for audio editing because you know exactly what you're working with. It's the same reason we don't use boosted high quality consumer speakers when we're making music. We use studio monitors because they don't necessarily sound good, they sound honest. The AT2035 has some boosts around, I think the 8K range, which makes the higher end sound of your voice sound a little bit more airy. So here's the thing though, looking through and doing my research on the difference between these two microphones, I'm kind of nitpicking to find the advantages that the Rode NT1 might have. One of the advantages of the AT2035 is you can actually take a louder signal with this mic. It has a higher SPL range. The maximum volume that you can record on a Rode NT1 without busting the capsule is about 132 decibels of sound pressure level. The maximum you can record on an AT2035 is 148 decibels of sound pressure level. See, for the price, this is a lot of microphone. and. Even not for the price, this is an extremely well-built, rugged, metal microphone, and it records great audio quality. Not just for the price, it records great audio quality. If you are a musician or a producer, the merits for the Rode NT1 might be worth the price jump. The Rode NT1 has really low self noise, a flat EQ curve, and higher capsule sensitivity. These might come in handy whenever you're recording music, not to mention it also has a 10 year warranty, which is nice. But if you're just doing streaming or something like that, there's only so much of a difference in audio quality you're gonna be able to perceive when looking at really compressed audio when you're streaming, when it's competing against game audio and chat noises, the cheaper option might just be the better option for you. Either way, invest in room treatment. You're gonna hear reverberance off of a non-treated room with a condenser microphone. If you're listening to headphones or with studio monitors, you probably hear the reflections of this untreated room, as well as all the noises that are happening around me. Just like always, we're gonna have a vocal shootout that has an instrumental track behind it, acapella, and then we're gonna do a blind guitar taste Taste test? A blind guitar hearing test. Today singing we have Hello Juviez, a crazy talented songwriter and vocalist. And uh, yeah, let's hear what they have to sing. Through the night, you take me far. I come tonight. Oh, and moms But then swim me And let me see the missing part What you want from me Oh, soon me And keep 
that you always be like a close book to me. Went through the night, and you take me far. I come tonight, oh, and mom. A dance with me, and let me see the missing far. What you want from me? Oh, soon me and keep the key that you always be like a close book to me. My friend Ryan is a beatboxer and we were able to do a beatbox test with these microphones and it actually shows some really unique characteristics between these two microphones that we might not have gotten just with singing or with guitar. <laughs> If you look at the waveforms, the AT2035 actually has much higher peaks than the Rode NT1 does, which may speak to the fact that it's more sensitive than the specs lead it out to be. It might also be because the boosts in the high end on the AT2035 are going to make those plosives a little bit more sensitive. Who knows? Look, these mics are both awesome. There is so much noise. Shut up! Go inside! She just looked at me really weird because I was staring at her. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that you should not base your decision solely on what you think is better because of the price. I hope this video has helped you decide which sound you like better by objective comparison rather than just which mic you think is nicer. Anyways, thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.